Hi, Jeremy. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing this phone out yourself. I'm good. Thank you. Welcome to Ask a Bitcoiner 21 Questions. So before we get started, can you introduce yourself to the audience? So your name, social media handle, and what you do in the Bitcoin space? Yeah, Jeremy, um, uh, Jeremy Garcia, I'm not an anon, and I run Satoshi Journal. My personal Twitter handle is at Jeremy 5445 and my uh, the company Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin company Satoshi Journal is at Satoshi's Journal, and we do Bitcoin education and news, and we try to post as much as possible about what's happening in bitcoin and then we focus on people's bitcoin stories so that's what kind of makes us different from other uh bitcoin media companies i guess is focusing on trying to find out what your story is you publish it and you have the opportunity to get tipped in sets so that's what, we, what i do in the bitcoin world you're very humble because you're the founder Oh, yeah. And CEO of uh, Satoshi's Journal, and you say I run. That's it's nice. It's yeah, humble. Yeah, no, no, and I, I sometimes just forget. So yeah, I'm the CEO and founder. <laughs> That's, that's I'm here to remind you. And I actually met you through Satoshi's Journal. Um, and I also I think I wrote two articles, one or two articles, one about Machin Kura. Um, and I just have to say personally that um, my experience with Satoshi's Journal and meeting uh, Machin Kura through Twitter Spaces, Kodatso, was a huge awakening for me because I'd been doing diversity and inclusion consulting. And I finally realized what it meant to have Bitcoin or to understand that Bitcoin is permissionless. And so when you have a permissionless system, you don't have to necessarily discuss inclusion. Anyone can participate and build projects and stuff like that. So I have to say thank you because you contributed to that aha moment in my life. Yeah, no problem. It's been a very impactful time on me as well. Uh, got to meet so many people around the world. Um, we still do some bitter, uh, Bitcoin Twitter spaces. We started those about a year and a half ago, and they're still going, ran by a couple, three friends of ours. And um, they still interview people from all over the world. And it's yeah. uh, basically African-centric, but anyone in the world can can come in those spaces and talk about their Bitcoin experience. So it's really cool. Yeah, totally. Totally. Okay. So ask a Bitcoiner 21 questions. The whole idea or the goal of this is to get through 21 questions within 10 minutes. I sent you the questions ahead of time. And it's I think it's pretty cool because it allows us to get to know you better and to get some personal insights and insights on Bitcoin. But there's one caveat. I swapped out one of the questions for another one. Um, so that you're not totally okay. like over prepared, but I think it's in a domain that you know and you're familiar with, so it shouldn't be a problem. Sure. Yeah. Are okay. you ready? Yes. I've got my little I'm... box too. <laughs> I'm going to start the timer and let's. Oh dear. Go. Okay, it's starting. First question. Which areas of your life have been most impacted since learning about Bitcoin? Um, most areas of my life that have been impacted since I've found Bitcoin are, I'd say, diet. Um, I need ah. to work on it better, but I learned a lot about <laughs> diet. Um, so that's been very impactful. There's so many people in the Bitcoin space that I've met that are super versed in so many different areas, but it seems like Bitcoiners, they, they're very versed in, in diet and exercise. Prior to this, I was versed in it, but I became more versed in it. Um, so that was one area that was most impactful because it helped me like study. Like, the, there's the carnivore diet, there's the vegan diet, and then there's the between. And it it it, it seemed kind of far fetched that it would just be carnivore and carnivore only. And so when you look into it more deeper or deeply, it's um it seems contrary to popular belief that that would be the best way to go but it seems like the science point that way so 
And then when you start implementing it in your own life, um, it makes a big difference. So that's one of the impacts. The other impacts, of course, is the financial impact. I've tried to, I've been trying to attain financial freedom for a long time. And if you're trying <laughs> to do that with, uh, with the fiat, um, you can't get to financial freedom uh, unless you play the game that they're playing. And and the game they're playing is actually the game of Monopoly. And everyone, every family has played the game of Monopoly. It's a board game, very popular. And in that board game, all the players, the goal is to have one player own all the assets and bankrupt all the other players. And yeah. so, um, and the banker, part, as part of the rule set, it says specifically that the banker can print more uh, Monopoly money if they run out of money. So, unbeknownst to most of the world, that board game is what's playing every household in the world. So, if you know how to win that board game, you can win the fiat aspect of the game. But it's it's better if you actually. That's why my my aha moment is um, in in learning about money um, and finding out that Bitcoin was the best form of money. You can win just by saving in Bitcoin. And it's as simple as that. You don't have to accrue apartments and houses and businesses, cash flowing um, assets. It's it's so simple that I think that's what most why most people get it wrong or they start shit coining or they start just getting confused. When you tell somebody simply buy Bitcoin and save it and that's it. They're like, yeah, oh, too easy. So your um, real estate are, tweet is amazing i have it bookmarked yeah those those two those oh the you're talking about the real estate um yeah okay yeah so being in real estate for a long time that was one of my orange pilling moments is just being able to understand how real estate worked and when i realized that basically real estate is property bitcoin is property but bitcoin is digital property and when you did digitize something versus having it physical, you can send it anywhere in the world. And in Michael Saylor's own words, at really any frequency, um, any time, uh, for however long, for at any rate, like that guy's something else. But um, those are probably the two most biggest impacts on my life um, and most impactful on my family. I don't yeah. have to spend exorbitant time trying to accrue assets that I have to maintain um, as tax headaches. Just buy whole Bitcoin. And if you do that. And go to El Salvador. <laughs> <laughs> go to El Salvador. Yeah, yeah. So I'd say that would be my answer there, Saida. Okay. In which year were you orange pilled? Is uh, November of 2020. Oh, um, very specific. Yeah, yeah. My my first purchase was I don't remember the date, but I, I, my memory goes back to the first purchase, November of twenty twenty, Cash App, and it was a little bit before that that the person that orange pilled me. Um, actually, I think that's one of your questions, so I won't go do that. But um, that's the date. And prior to that, I was big into um, just studying finance and money. I studied money and yeah. finance for a long time um, and read everything that finance and money people read. Rich Dad, Poor Dad, um, that's one of the most impactful books on, on my life. Um, and I read just so many books on finance and money that um, the history of finance and money helped me understand Bitcoin once I got to yeah. the point that I realized it wasn't a Ponzi or fiat, um, sorry, Ponzi or pyramid scheme, because when I first found out about it in 2015, um, yeah. it was a Yahoo article, and it basically the Yahoo article said that Bitcoin was used on the dark web for illicit activity, yeah. and that's what turned me off. So unfortunately, I didn't look down into it more. <laughs> okay, so we touched on this one, but I'll still ask it. Bitcoin or real estate? Oh, Bitcoin. And I have a Twitter article 
that if you go to at Jeremykin5445, my handle, it's and search real estate, you'll find it. And I basically went through in great detail the differences between real estate and Bitcoin and why Bitcoin is way better. The only thing that Bitcoin doesn't have that real estate has is cash flow. But if you, flows, yeah. if you really look at it, and that's funny, I tweeted at uh, Gary Cardone, yes, two days ago. So Gary and Grant Cardone are real estate moguls. Um, I didn't really follow them as much as Robert Kiyosaki. Um, but they, Grant Cardone just sold a property for like 650 Bitcoin. And I remember being on a space with Gary Cardone because they're brothers. And I posted my article in the nest with him. And Grant Cardone literally said that my article was clickbait. And it pissed me off. And uh, I didn't get to tell him that it wasn't clickbait because he didn't let me talk. But I basically uh, very objectively went through the differences. And as far as the cash flow aspect of real estate, Bitcoin will actually appreciate, in my opinion, faster than even the cash flows that you can generate from a business. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. So if you do the math, if Bitcoin appreciates on average at 100%, um, in that article, after you account for taxes and um, all the other incentives of real estate, the rate of return that you're supposed to get is like 37 to 40%. That's accounting for everything. But that's why I say that at 100% um, compound annual growth rate, which is not going to be that forever, but I think it's still possible. Kager, yeah. Kager, yeah. I think you can still exceed the cash flow that you would generate from your properties. So one of these days, maybe late, maybe a few days from now, I'll write an article and, and, and do the, the calculations just to show, because a lot of people, that's what they, their argument is, it doesn't cash flow. So the other thing though, is even though you cash flow in, in real estate, the, the cash that you're generating is inflated. So unless you're, cash flowing enough to offset all your expenses um, plus inflation because inflation is compounded that's another thing that people don't really hone in on inflation is compounded if you're getting a a return on your money of 10 percent and inflation is two you're getting only eight it, it just eats it right at the top and if 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 you're not accounting for inflation, that's why most people can't retire today and in the last 10 yeah. years. They don't, they, their financial advisor does not say, hey, this is adjusted for inflation. And so people get to retirement age and they little, literally can't retire because they were in assets that weren't keeping up with inflation. And that's, that's actually the reason why you see people still working at Walmart or anywhere else. Yeah. Can, they couldn't retire mm -hmm. and it's very sad to me. So. That's why his financial liter literacy is the most important thing to put in our, our school systems. And um, I hope that happens sooner than later. But um, yeah, yeah, that would be my answer. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, so 10 minutes um, are up. <laughs> I think ask a Bitcoiner 21 questions in 10 minutes is just not feasible because we've gotten through three questions so far. <laughs> <laughs> We'll continue with the 21 questions and it'll just be ask a Bitcoiner 21 questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, wait, so I thought, it was, I thought it was 10 minutes for every question. I got that wrong then, right? Uh, or... No, I, that's probably my miscommunication. Oh, it's uh, I'm, I'm supposed sorry. to answer 21 questions in, uh, in 10 minutes, but oh, that's okay. We gosh. can continue. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I... I misunderstood that and and when i thought about it i saw 21 questions 10 minutes 210 minutes it's a long time that's a long. <laughs> <laughs> okay well just ask me any question that you'd like and i'll answer them as quickly as possible sorry about that oh no that's okay um okay so favorite bitcoin book blog or article um my favorite bitcoin book is actually probably bitcoin money you can't fuck with 
by going par going parabolic. Ah. It's not it's not one that's very a lot of people talk about, but I really oh, I like don't it. know that one. Yeah. I will check that out. Next question. Will the Fed ever get a handle on inflation? No. Simple to the point direct. <laughs> Spend, hodl, or trade? A hodl. Hodl? You didn't yeah. spend any sats in El Salvador? Um, well, the, the, the cold storage stack, hodl, just the, yeah. the stuff you have in hot wallet, just spend. Yeah. And so, indeed, when I was in Salvador, that was the best thing as everyone accepted Bitcoin and it was quick and bum, bum, bum. So it was yeah. cool to be in a circular economy in which that was allowed and, and people liked it. And, um, but yeah, the majority of what you save just hodl and then whatever yep. you have in the hot wallet you spend. Cause we have to, spend. we have to support the network in both war forms. Um, mm -hmm. there's everyone says hodl, hodl and that's it. But I mean, Everyone doesn't go and use the internet just for sending emails. I mean, they use it for a lot of things. So mm -hmm. um, I don't know what the equivalent of using TCPIP for saving would be, but uh, we don't just use TCPIP for, for saving. We use it for, for saving. internet. We use it for streaming a video right now. We use it for all kinds yeah. of things. So I use network for, in its full capacity. I totally agree. Uh, okay, list Bitcoin's value proposition in five words or terms or less. Um, the value proposition in five terms would be, oh, geez, I would just say five terms. Savings, or less. Savings, savings, savings. I mean, I, I'm a super <laughs> yeah. saver. I'm a super, I was, I was a saver before Bitcoin and still bubble yeah, bomb. Yeah, same. And now I'm a super saver and more so now, I think because the value proposition is such that when you have something that can't be created out of thin air, you just want to save it. It's like really the most precious thing second to your time on earth. So if you value your time, you need to yeah. encapsulate it in something that allows it to be encapsulated in there. And that's Bitcoin. So. Um, yeah, five words to save. That's five. Save, save, save. <laughs> okay, which country would you like to visit the most? Uh, Africa. That you haven't already visited. Yeah, namely in Africa, probably Kenya. And yeah. South Africa and Namibia, because I, I have friends over there. So that would be my answer. Oh, we touched on this. Carnivore, vegan, or who cares? I think both. Um, even though I said earlier that it seems like all signs point that carnivore is the way, it's hard for me to believe that there's ever just one right answer. I mean, mm -hmm. humans are complex organisms and they need a little bit of everything. So I, I don't see any problems with having a little bit of everything. So, yes, having. A diet of meat is good, but a lot of Bitcoiners, I think, have to realize that there's people whose bodies have issues processing certain things. I have a cousin, literally, he can't eat hardly anything. His stuff, I don't know. We actually, he still doesn't know to this day what his Thank issue is. He can't eat a lot of food. So every person's a little bit different. For the most part, we are the same as far as how we're how we're comprised or of whatever but it, it's going to be different for everybody um so i would say both both um ooh, this one is this is a contentious question right now ossification or does bitcoin need to change um i think that it's going to change but as soon as satoshi sent the white paper paraphrasing him he said something to to the effect that, well, actually, I think this is other people saying this, but he basically, after he sent the white paper, it was pretty much done. So, like, anything that's going to be changed from here on out, it's going to be very hard to do so because it will require the consensus of 
of most everybody. Um, the nodes, I think it's 90, plus, 90% plus. Um, I kind of like it, liken it to like dinosaurs. Let's say, let's talk about a crocodile. The crocodile is still evolving. I think it's, it's actually the shark is the oldest, I think, one of the oldest or organisms on Earth. It's still evolving for millions of years. Mm. And I think that's what Bitcoin is going to do, but very, 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 very incrementally. Like, we'll just say Bitcoin was done 95% and there's like 5% tweaking left. I mean, the majority of the tweaking is going to be on second, third, fourth layers, but the first layer is 95% done. I mean, I would even go as far as saying 99% because there's not going to be much more. I don't think that's going to change, but yeah, it's very contentious. So um, that's coming from a down on the farm. That's a down on the farm answer. That's not a developer answer. So hopefully <laughs> people don't hate me. <laughs> very pragmatic. Um, what is the best resource for people who are new to Bitcoin? Um, so I would say, and this is me being subjective, but on satoshijournal.com, we do have a place where you go and you go to resources. We've done our best to put all the resources that we felt are the best. Um, and there's one resource in particular on our website, toshijournal.com. When you go to the resources, you go to a Discord channel that's been created by one of our friends. His name is Phil. He goes yeah, by at amazing. Creations. And that guy, I, I wish that his resources or that Discord was more popular because he has spent hours years just compiling everything that he can compile and this is a one-man deal yeah and anything you could ever learn from easy medium and difficult is all right there so if, that's what i would say and that's my subjective answer <laughs> your subjective answer um toxic or non-toxic maximalism um so I've never agreed with toxicity. I, I don't know where tox, the toxic word came to be, but I, love I think words. it was from Vitalik. Okay, well then, then there's a problem. Um, just, just like, just like, um, well, maximalism came from him as well. So I think Bitcoiners ended up just taking that and running just because it was Vitalik yeah. and they wanted to use it as a mean. But anyways. I don't believe that Bitcoiners naturally are toxic. Toxic, I associate with poison. No, the Bitcoiners aren't poisonous in my mind. They just are people that say you have a booger in your nose and people don't like when they're yeah. told they have a booger in their nose. So it's just they tell the truth and they're really quick to find if someone's lying. And that's what yeah. I love about Bitcoiners is they will find you out if you're lying and they will, yeah. and they will freaking tell you. And so they will, we need more people yeah. like that in the world in general. So I don't think they're toxic. I think that they are just truth sayers. And um, we just now have a moniker of being toxic, maximalist. And it's like worn with pride because we're cool. So it's like being in a club. So <laughs> in, that, in that respect, I'm happy to be part of the club, <laughs> but I'm, I'm not toxic. So, and I don't think yeah. Bitcoiners are toxic either. I don't think you're toxic at all. Um, oh, here we go. Say Bitcoin fixes this in an, in another language. Oh, okay, yeah. So Bitcoin fixar uh, esto. So in Spanish. Esto? Esto, yeah. Bitcoin fixar, F-I-X-A-O. And then esto, E-S-T-O. Bitcoin fixar esto. Sí. Sí. Yes. Si, senor. Um, who orange filled you? Um, interesting. So, Andreas Antonopoulos would probably be the first yeah. and foremost. Um, prior to him, I think they call it Red Pill. Uh, Mike Maloney. So, Mike Maloney, oh, if you yeah. guys don't know who he is, you guys need to go. He's a gold bug, but he also does accept payment in Bitcoin and he owns Bitcoin. He still has a ways to go to be fully orange bill, but his position as being a gold per bug prevents him from fully being orange pill, I think. Um, anyways, he understands monetary history and money better than 
most people. And he's the one that taught me about monetary history and money. And I highly recommend you go to um, just search Mike Maloney on YouTube and search the, um, what's called the, um, oh, shoot. The Hidden Secrets of Money. Hidden Secrets of Money. That should be yeah. shown in all schools, like year yep. one. And then, um, so he would have been the red pill and then. Andreas Atomopoulos would have been the orange pill. I miss him. I loved his content. Yeah. Um, is Bitcoin... Sorry, go ahead. No, yeah, he's he's great. I wish he would talk more, but I guess he maybe said everything he needed to say. I highly recommend you read all his books, listen to all his podcasts. He can talk in a down-on-the-farm down manner. He's not super technical. Yeah. I mean, he's technical, but he's not going to talk in using huge words. So definitely listen to him <laughs> yeah is bitcoin a cult uh i don't think it's a cult um well actually i think by def definition it's a cult i have to look at the word cult i, I think it's some basically a group of people that have a strong belief in something and so by that definition it would be a cult but cults because so I, I looked this up a while back, I think what I'm saying is true. So, truth me, but cult the word has a bad image by most, like even include, including my family. If if they if you're told you're in a cult, that's almost like you're in a devil worshiping deal, and we're not devil <laughs> worshippers. So, so, cult has is a bad word because people associate with like bad things. But if yeah. you're a group of people with a strong belief in something. I think you're defined as a cult. So I think I think we're in a cult, Saida. But once again, do, do your own research and see if I'm right. Because I can't remember what my mother better not to listen be. to this. <laughs> She's super Christian, super religious. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So Bitcoin is multidisciplinary. Which discipline are you most drawn to? I.e. cryptography, programming, economics, etc. Um I would say the economics part of it, specifically, I mean, economics is a lot, but um, yeah, I'd say economics is be my yeah. technical forte, I guess. Uh -huh. What is the best technical Bitcoin resource that you've come across? Um, probably Mastering Bitcoin, uh, Andreas Alcopoulos' yeah. book. I research it, or I've read that book, not all the way through because I'm not a programmer, but if you read that book, yeah. even though it says Mastering Bitcoin, you don't have to be a master. He actually writes it in such a manner where it's, like I said, down on the farm. Anyone can re write it, read it, but then it gets technical as you go. But if you want to really, like, it's a good reference for you to be Yeah, able, exactly. Yeah, when people, like, when really smart people that are program orient programmers speak on Twitter, yeah or Bitcoiners in general that are programmers, yep. and they say something that is like a term you don't know, that's where I go. I'm like, oh, that's what they Yeah, talking. totally. <laughs> or when I'm messing around with my node, I have it right beside me, and, and I'm always like, yeah. you know, it's it's uh, it's very humbling, though, because I realize my limitations, but uh, it's a great reference book. Yeah. Uh, okay. Austrian, Keynesian, or another school of economics, which do you prefer? Um, I subscribe to the Austrian, which I think is what most Bitcoiners subscribe to, and mainly because the basis of Austrian economics is that we have a free market um, versus Keynesians. It's having a market that's not free, and they can basically create things out of thin air, namely money, uh, currency. So that's what I would subscribe to. Um, I'm trying to think of the other. economic types there are, but yeah, I, can, I can't think of any that I would subscribe to outside of that one. Okay. Um, we touched upon this. Who is the best Bitcoin educator of all time? Mm, well, Bitcoin, oh, yeah. I'm kind of going against what I said earlier, but um, I, I say Andreas still, 
But Michael Saylor is also up there, and mainly because he uses a lot of analogies. And I love analogies, mm -hmm. and he can break down probably since he started till now. When he distills what Bitcoin is, he's used thousands and thousands of analogies to say this is what Bitcoin is. And one of those analogies is bound to bring you in. And the one that brought me in probably fully was when he likened it to digital property. So um, those would be top two, I think. Yeah. Uh, ha, ha. We're almost done. Um... How do you define inflation? Kind of inflation a trick question. Simply, inflation is simply the creation of something more than what it started out with. So if you put a million dollars in your economy and you decide to make a million more, well, then you inflated it, inflated it by 100% uh, or 50%, I think. So... Yeah, that's what inflation is. Last question. What is your favorite hardware wallet? I like the cold wallet. I started off on a ledger. And then, for those that don't know, the ledger, they had a couple of uh, bad deals happen with their company. Namely, the ledger company got hacked and a bunch of um, private information got sent out of their customers. And the way they handled it wasn't good. And then they recently um, um, put out a feature on their hardware wallet that allows your hardware wallet to have a, um, okay, I think it's called a, a shard, a shard of your uh, private, <laughs> your, your, I really like that word, shard. The, the <laughs> your, your, your private keys can be sharded. I mean, that this doesn't sound good. So anyways. Most Bitcoiners have left the ledger, and a lot of them use cold card, including myself. And cold card is is the best in my mind because upon you receiving it, you can tell it's all like super encrypted. Super, um, there's a lot of security behind it from the time you open it to the time you you open the, the you open your your lead your um, cold card bag and. When you break the seal, well, that's the first thing, and you turn it on and it, it says, what is the code on your bag? So you have to enter it and so on and so forth. Layers upon layers of, of tamper-proof or tamper-resistant um, mechanisms. So they definitely did their, their job in making sure it's a highly secure wallet. And if you're trying to secure the most precious thing on Earth, <laughs> you want to make sure that you're doing it with the most secure um, man-made hardware device um, or put it in your brain I guess but there's some bad things about that as well so um, yeah that's, that's my long answer <laughs> well that was the last question but since you replied with cold card I've got a bonus question for you fully air gapped or has it touched the internet uh, fully air gapped yeah and it's interesting because the most secure information in the world i.e. the codes to the nukes, the codes to secret stuff, CIA, FBI, those are all air gapped. They're put on servers with air gaps. They never touch I did air. not know this. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, if they're doing it, then you should do it. And then why can't I? <laughs> and it's not as hard as people think. It's yeah, the, the only thing that's ever touched my cold card is the, the power cord. <laughs> yeah. You plug it into your cold card, that's it. So it's whoever created cold card obviously had, uh, is very well versed in cybersecurity. But if the, if the federal governments, governments of the world are using air gap techniques for the most safe information in the world, it probably behooves you to do the same thing because what you're, what you're holding is you've encapsulated your time. And time is the most valuable thing. So make sure that you do it in the most safe manner so you don't lose your time. Perfect.
wonderful way to end it. Thank you, Jeremy. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for having me, Sadie. I enjoyed it.